What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl that's cool. Let's get into this commentary. What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl gossip girl. And today I want to talk to you about a woman named Ebony Lachey Crockett. Now Ebony Lachey Crockett, she worked at Amazon and she was shot three times and she died. Now her ex and her ex-boyfriend Corey is the person that did this. So we're gonna get into this because the family has questions. Okay. The family of a woman gunned down at the Amazon facility in Horn Lake shared the hurt they feel from losing a loved one who meant so much. 44-year-old Ebony Crockett of March Street, Arkansas, lost her life on Friday. Now, this was posted on, this article was posted on June 8th, okay? So, this was, this freshly, this happened a couple of days ago. Lost her life Friday after allegedly being shot to death by her ex-boyfriend, 45-year-old Corey Brewer. To me, it's not allegedly he did it, okay? Corey shot her while she was at work, okay? Relatives met Tuesday with Fox 13 at their family church where their father, Larry Crockett Sr., serves as a senior pastor. The close-knit fit, the close-knit family acknowledges Ebony's presence will be greatly missed. Now her siblings are left with questions about how could this have happened to their beloved sister. How did he even get there? Why was he constantly coming to her job? Why no one knew about this? He was fired. How is he still allowed on the premises? Because once you are fired from a job, you can't come on, depending on what kind of job it is and what hair, and what kind of what warehouse it is, you can't come back on the premises, okay? Once you're fired, you are fired. You can't come back on the premises. So how was he even allowed to get back on the premises and with a gun at that? And that, that was questioned by Ebony's younger brother, Titus Crockett. Now, according to the police, Corey approached Ebony in the Amazon parking lot where she worked Friday afternoon. Police say he then shot her and fled the scene. Ebony had a protective order that was served to Corey the day before her life was taken. See, this is what I'm saying. She had a protective order against this man. These protective orders do not protect you at all. Because these men will still find a way to kill you or to harm you. A protective order is to keep him away. He didn't care about that piece of paper. He didn't give a damn about that protective order. He still went to her job, met her at the parking lot, and he killed her. I really do think the protective order needs to be reinforced. It needs to be, it needs to have like some type of um, something added to it that really protects people. And he was served with that order the day before he took her life. Now, according to the document issued by the county district court in Mark Tree, Arkansas, the no contact order was drawn up for third degree stalking and was issued May 9th and served June 2nd. He constantly came down to her house daily, knocking on the door, beating on the door, leaving items there, leaving letters, very weird said Titus Crockett. Ebony was described by her family and close friends as a good person with a good with a heart of gold, who was all about family. She was a good girl and she didn't deserve that. The way she went out, said her younger sister Ivory Crockett. She didn't deserve this. Now the executive director of the W the Y the YWCA of Greater Memphis said it's necessary to be aware of the red flags. Those are in some cases the beginning of steps of stalking and manipulation, domination, and control, Odom said. The offender or perpetrator begins to feel they have lost control. One of the biggest things is isolation. Every time you mention something that you would like to do outside of them, without them being involved, 
Then it's I was going to take you to dinner. I just want to I just want to spend time at home together. You know, they just do things to isolate you. She adds that these are signs that it's time to reevaluate. Now, Odom said community organizations like the YWCA provide resources for those who feel stuck in an abusive situation as well as action plan. Take some time off work, stay at the domestic violence shelter, and more. Now, in the wake of such devastating of a devastating loss, Crockett said they want others to recognize the signs of abuse while they also leave a message for the public. Speak out. Talk to somebody. A trusted friend said Ivory Crockett. Just make people more aware of what's going on. People around you so they can be on the lookout for you. The family is still awaiting results from the autopsy report. They told Fox 13 they do plan to hold Ebony's memorial service at the church, at the family's church, Living Water Ministry in Mark Street, Arkansas. This is so sad. So did he? Did they catch him yet? Because I didn't see any report about him being arrested at all. So, my thing is, she probably broke up with him, okay? I don't know the whole thing, but she probably broke up with him, and he didn't like it. Men don't like rejection, and they don't like when you leave them, okay? Some men, will go that would drive them insane when you leave them and when you reject them. And they will do everything in their power to keep you, um, you know, to keep you. They try to control you. They just try to do all sorts of things. And in this case, he was stalking her. Okay? And that protective order did not protect her. And that's sad. So now the family have to put services together because their loved one is gone. All because of him, Corey Brewer. So I didn't see anything yet. When he's arrested, I will come back and make sure I give you an update. Because I was looking around to see if he was arrested and I don't see anything as of right now. But if he's not arrested, they will get him. Okay. And like I said, I will update you guys on more information on his arrest once, once it's put out there. Because right now I don't see it. But you know, domestic violence is a very serious thing. And sometimes we don't notice that our friends or family are going through that because we may see... The nice side, the calm side, but when they're in the house, it could be totally different. And how would we know anything is going on if our loved ones don't tell us something that's going on? Or if we're around them and we see signs of control or whatever, and we step to our loved one, hey, are you okay? Because it seems like he's controlling you. And if that person said, oh, no, he's fine, whatever, there's nothing much that a family could do. But... Moving on and moving forward from this, everybody, please, when you are in a relationship and you feel that he's what he's doing is a red flag, tell your friends, tell your family members, listen, write notes if you have to, let somebody know something, just in case something happened to you, then we know who to go after. You get what I'm saying? But if no one tells us anything, how will we know? Don't sit quiet when it comes to a domestic situation, domestic violence. Don't sit quiet. Tell somebody and try to move on from that. But these protective orders, they don't work. These protective orders do not work. And plenty of women have been killed once they loved one or their significant other is served with a protective order because that's like how dare you i'm gonna show you something you get what i'm saying how dare you put this on me how dare you have me served so now it drives the adrenaline and they're coming after you okay the stalking gets worse now your life is in danger if you thought your life was in danger before your life is 10 times worse in danger because now they've been served with a piece of paper and for to some people they do not like that and it and they crazy kicks in 
And unfortunately, Corey is one of those men that fit that description. She didn't want to be bothered with him no more. She didn't want him no more. He went to her job, okay, where she wasn't protected by family. He went to her job, caught her off guard, and he killed her, shot her three times. Now, where is Corey? Where is he? He needs to be arrested. And if anybody is hiding him, they need to be arrested as well. But they're going to get him. They will. They'll get him. Because like I said, right now, I don't see anything saying he was arrested. And as soon as I find out he was arrested, I will let you guys know. But please, please, if you are in a domestic violence situation, tell somebody. Leave a note if you have to. We in the world of technology. Send an email. Send text messages. Do something to let your loved one know, hey, I'm going through something. I am going through this. Please keep an eye out for me. Please come and check on me when you don't hear from me. Okay? Because a protective order doesn't do anything. It's just a piece of paper. She filed for it in May. And he was served June 9th. I tell you. My prayers and condolences to her family because this is a sad situation and they have to deal with this. They have to give memorial services for their loved one, which they shouldn't have to do. Okay. All right, you guys, that's all I have for right now. I'll be back later and I'll talk to you soon.